You know, I, I wasn't going to talk about Star Wars, but I, I guess that uh, I guess that I will because it is May the fourth, and uh, and never have we seen such a wretched a wretched hive of scum and villainy as the as the U.S. Congress apparently. But uh, aside from aside from that, uh, you know what? You guys have all seen the the trailer for the new Star Wars movie, no, right? No, 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 no. Oh, he hasn't seen the trailer for the new Star Wars movie, so. Dang it! So I'm not okay. So I'm not going to talk about this just for Mathis. I'm going to skip it just for Mathis. Um, I, I will give you my one-word reaction to it, uh, which is disappointing. Disappointing is my one-word reaction to the trailer. Okay, I haven't seen the movie. The movie's not out yet, Mathis. Calm yourself down. The trailer is the trailer is disappointing. Uh, I I also believe that I rewatched Rogue One and I reviewed Rogue One a few months back, and I think I gave it a little bit short shrift because I was really tired when I saw it. I saw it at like eleven o'clock at night, and I was kind of falling asleep at the time. And uh, and I rewatched it actually on a plane, um, and it's really good. I mean, Rogue One is really a first-rate movie. It's much much better than The Force Awakens. The Force Awakens does not age well. The Force Awakens is one of those movies where when you see it, you're like, you walk out, you're like, that was pretty good. And then the more you think about it, you're like, that was really not very good. Uh, and the, and that, that's because you realize, number one, and you know this at the time, but you're so overwhelmed by the nostalgia of it that it doesn't matter so much. It's exactly the same plot as the original Star Wars. And then beyond that, they destroy your childhood, right? Okay, so I can, it, do I need to give spoiler alerts for Force Awakens? Everyone on Earth has seen Force Awakens. Do I need to, do I, okay. So spoiler alert, spoiler alert, okay. Now, Han Solo gets killed, right? It destroys your childhood. Okay, I grew up where Han Solo was the galaxy's biggest badass. And everyone wanted to be Han Solo, right? Women wanted him and men wanted to be him. Every, no one cared about Luke. Luke was kind of a whiny geek. But Han was awesome. And then they turn him in The Force Awakens into a bickering divorced dad who can't deal with his kid. You know he's going to buy it the minute that, that Princess Stupid Leia, who hasn't done anything to develop her Force skills, by the way. I mean, they, they foreshadow it. In, in Empire Strikes Back, right, Yoda, there is another. And then she does nothing with the Force for the rest of her life. For the rest of her life, she does zero things with the Force. Right, the end of Empire Strikes Back, Luke talks to her with his mind, oh, happy day. That's the entirety of what Princess Leia does with the Force for the rest of her entire life. Except for giving birth to, apparently, the, the, the next worst person in the universe. So... She tells Han that it's time for Han to go talk to her kid. The minute she says that, he should have said to her, look, lady, you go do it. Like, I've got a life of my, you know, you're his mom. You go talk to him. Why me? Why do I have to do it? She says, go talk to him. Yeah, that's going to go real well. That's just going to, that's going to be a winner. Also, I, I do have to ask why it is that in a galaxy where people have achieved life speed, no one has a cell phone. They're like, well, why is it that nobody can just pick up a phone and call Kylo Ren and be like, dude, get your, get your bleep together. Hey, let me Facebook you. We'll have a conversation. Like, let's get together for a coffee. Instead, I'm going to fly to your death planet and I'm going to infiltrate your death planet with, ever, with all your friends trying to murder me. And then we'll have a conversation on one of Star Wars' famous walkways. Okay, here's the rule in Star Wars. Never have a conversation on a walkway suspended over nothing. Okay, always goes wrong. Never a good move. <laughs> no one has ever had a good conversation on a walkway suspended above nothing. It just ends poorly for someone involved. It destroys your childhood. Again, Han's whole thing is that he's a badass. Harrison Ford in real life is still kind of a badass. Turning him into... You know, like a character, the parents of one of these kids from the Bad News Bears is really, is really nasty. So uh, anyway, um, I hope that the new Star Wars is better than that. Rogue One was really good. Um, but unfortunately, there can't be sequels really to Rogue One. The sequel to Rogue One is the actual first Star Wars film. Uh, so um, I guess we're going to have to live with whatever they give us. I, I just hope that The Last Jedi is not Jar Jar Banks. That's all I hope. So David Harbour is one of the actors from Stranger Things. He's the guy who plays the sheriff in Stranger Things. So there are a few things about this. There's one thing I do love, and, there's, and then there's the speech itself. So the thing I love is watch Winona Ryder's face during this speech because it is so unbelievably amusing. It's really spectacular. And then there's what he actually has to say, and what he has to say is really obnoxious. Uh, we would like to thank... Oh, it's so heavy. Uh, we'd like to thank Netflix, uh, Sean, Matt, Ross, and the amazing casting director, Carmen Cuba. Um, <laughs> And I would just like to say that in light of all that's going on in the world today, it's difficult to celebrate the already celebrated Stranger Things. But this award from you, who take your craft seriously and earnestly believe, like me, that great acting can change the world, is a call to arms from our fellow craftsmen and women to go deeper and through our art to battle against fear, self-centeredness, and exclusivity of our predominantly <laughs> narcissistic culture and through our craft to cultivate a more empathetic <laughs> and understanding society. Society by revealing intimate truths that serve as a forceful reminder to folks that when they feel broken and afraid and tired, they are not alone. 
We are united in that we are all human beings and we are all together on this horrible, painful, joyous, exciting, and mysterious ride that is being alive. Now, as we act in the continuing narrative of Stranger Things, we 1983 Midwesters will repel bullies. We will shelter freaks and outcasts, those who have no homes. We will get past the lies. We will hunt monsters. And when we are at a loss amidst the hypocrisy and the casual violence of certain individuals and institutions, we will, as per Chief Jim Hopper, punch some people in the face when they seek to destroy the meat and the disenfranchised and the marginalized. I love all the actors. Okay, so stop right there. So punch some people in the, and all the actors are like, yeah, where's my paid security? Right? Like, the last time these hackers punched somebody in the face was never. Okay, so a few things about this that are really incredible. First of all, the arrogance of actors just generally is astonishing. We change the world with our acting. No, nobody watched Stranger Things and they went, refugee policy. Now I understand. Yeah, the fact is, you'd never see the sort of arrogance from the people who actually make the world go, right? At the plumber's convention, no one gets up winning the plumber of the year award and they go, plumbers can change how people feel about the world. No, plumbers are here to fix your plumbing. Actors are here, sorry to break it to you, gang, actors are here to amuse us. Actors are here to entertain us. Maybe they help change our feelings about certain issues, but those issues are few and far between. Most of the time we put on entertainment at night because it's entertaining, not because we're looking to have our worldview change. But this idea is, we believe that our craft changes the world. No, actually, it's the writers who are doing that, you're just the actors. Okay? And, when, and when people act badly, like Chuck Schumer broke into tears over this whole thing, people just mock him. So, that's number one. Number two... That's an amazing line, the one that they're cheering where he says, we will punch some people in the face. Okay, so I'm old enough to remember when Donald Trump was saying that he would pay the legal bills of people who punched people in the face at his rallies. You remember this? And the entire left lost their mind. And I said, this is not good. It's not good when Obama says we'll bring a knife to a gunfight. It's not good when Donald Trump says he'll pay the legal bills of people who assault people at his rallies. And it's not good when actors say we're going to punch people in the face because we disagree and the entire Hollywood crowd starts cheering. Can you imagine what the reaction would have been if Clint Eastwood in 2012 at the RNC had said, Obamacare is an awful policy, and you know what we're going to do? We're going to say, make my day. Right? The left would have said, what, is he threatening to shoot people? Right? Is he threatening violence? How dare Clint Eastwood? But this guy gets up there and he starts shouting, and he's never heard of this guy before Stranger Things. This guy gets up there and he starts shouting about we're going to punch people in the face. And then they wonder why the American discourse is dying. They're wondering why it is that the so social fabric is falling apart. Listen, you can disagree with the executive order. You can think that it's badly written. I think parts of it are badly written too. You can think it was horribly rolled out. You can think whatever you want about it. It doesn't give you the right to act with violence against other people in a civilized society. That is the definition of civilization. But he's being cheered by people on the left for this sort of thing. He's being cheered. And that's an amazing statement about where we are in American politics, that this is considered heroism. To get up there wearing a black tie and wearing a, uh, and wearing a tux at a place where nobody's getting punched because they've got high-level security and cops surrounding the entire place, talking about punching your political opponents... This is not good for the country. It's really bad for the country. And everybody cheering and saying this is brave. It's not brave in the slightest, and it's not good in the slightest. You can oppose everything and still, this is and, and still say that, that violence in pursuit of your political ends is the beginning of fascism.